Go. So today we're going to learn about the difference between long period ground motion and short period ground motion and the effects in particular of long period ground motion on the built environment. So if you see some of the major cities in the world like Beijing, Santiago, Tehran, Tokyo, Taipei, etc., they're located on deep sedimentary deposits. So you've got uh, soils that are very deep of the order of kilometers, 100 meters to kilometers, um, surrounded by very stiff mountains, uh, very rigid mountains all around. And um, for understandable reasons that there is, uh, you know, this, these are the places, these sedimentary deposits are where there is water, and so uh, big cities uh, tended to form in these, uh, in these regions. Uh, unfortunately, along with mountain building, you have a lot of faulting, earthquake faulting, and so those are the, also the regions where the seismic hazard is high. If you look at, for example, Los Angeles, here is the Los Angeles basin, it's uh, the, the deepest part of the basin is of the order of 10 kilometers, surrounded by very stiff San Gabriel, very high San Gabriel mountains, and you've got the San Andreas Fault right behind it. So what happens if the San, San Andreas Fault breaks? and a big rupture on the earthquake, uh, rupture occurs on the San Andreas Fault, um, what happens is the following. So a big earthquake happened in 1857 and um, a newspaper report uh, suggested that the water rushed violently to one bank in the Los Angeles River, it's a big body of water, the water rushed violently to one bank and then back again and this motion, this sloshing motion being repeated several times. So this is indicative of long period, large amplitude motion with long duration. What do we mean by that? What we mean by that is when you have um, the earthquake happening behind the mountains, the energy is released in the form of waves and you've got high frequency waves that are uh, generated. These are the P waves and the S waves that are generated. These P waves and S waves uh, are very efficient in their uh, propagation through the mountains and as they interact with each other as well as um, uh, with the uh, free surface of the earth they form other uh, kinds of waves called Rayleigh waves and love waves and these are longer period waves so if you look at the highest frequency waves the highest frequency waves are the P waves followed by a slightly longer period uh, wave the S wave and then uh, even longer period uh, Rayleigh and love so these are the waves that are generated in the earthquake site uh, at the rupture of the earthquake and then these waves travel through the uh, mountains and the mountains being very stiff and rigid um, this energy propagation is really efficient and so the, uh, the, you know, all the uh, waves just travel really quickly through the mountains but then they encounter the sedimentary deposit which is a very soft material. So as soon as they encounter this soft material, this soft material has uh, doesn't want to, is much more sluggish compared to the mountains, and so it wants to go through these, this kind of slow motion. So this energy just comes in quickly and then gets backed up. And as the uh, energy gets backed up, the waves, they grow in amplitude, as well as because the, the sedimentary deposit wants to do this kind of sluggish motion, uh, the motions actually become long period. In other, in other words, it takes a long time for the ground to go from one side to the other. So um, here's an example of uh, such motions uh, from an earthquake. This is the uh, Mex Mexicali earthquake that happened in, uh, uh, a couple of years back, a magnitude 7.2 earthquake. What you're seeing in here is a swimming pool of a hotel. You have a camera that is sitting on a very stiff, rigid post and that is uh, overlooking the uh, swimming pool. So what you're going to see is the earthquake happens and you're going to see the high frequency waves that travel the fastest. They are really, uh, they travel really quickly and they arrive first. And when the high frequency arrives first, uh, waves arrive first, they start, the, they get the very stiff post excited and so the post is going to go crazy, right? And so it's going to do all the shaking and if you look during that time, the, the swimming pool, the water line will remain where it is, the swimming pool remains calm. In other words, the swimming pool will not be excited by this high frequency motion at all. Uh, subsequently, the uh, high frequency waves uh, are done, they dissipated, and, and then come the long period waves, which are slower, but they're carrying a lot of energy. They're slower, they're long period waves. And then you will notice that this post will slow down. Instead, the uh, swimming pool water will start to slosh. That means that, oh. 
That means that uh, this is uh, the, the long period motion actually selectively excites this big body of water. So here is the earthquake that started. Notice the water line, no movement of the water at this point. The high frequency waves have come in or starting to come in. And the post, the stiff post is, going, is, is getting uh, excited tremendously. And so you see the uh, camera going back and forth uh, several cycles very quickly. Nothing is happening to the water at this point. Now these uh, high frequency waves are done, they're slowly dissipating and then you have the long period waves that are coming in and these are long period waves that tend to, do the, uh, tend to move the earth like this. And it's this kind of motion that actually excites this uh, big body of water, this uh, long period waves excite this big body of water and uh, they end up uh, sloshing the water out of the, uh, um, out of the swimming pool. So this is exactly what happens in a, in a big earthquake and your, your structures are sitting in a sedimentary deposit Then you're going to see these long period waves come in. Now what are the implications of these long period waves um, to, to our built environment, right? So here is a toy model um, consisting of, uh, think of this uh, toy model as, as your house, think of this as a, say, you know, five to eight story building, think of this as your 20 story building and think of this as your 50 story building. Right, so I'm going to excite this, this model, this toy model with high frequency motions and you will see that the high frequency motion will selectively excite this low rise, this house if you like, uh, much more than this tall building, right. So that's the high frequency motion. So here's the high frequency motion now. Notice how the low rise structure has get gotten tremendously excited by this high frequency motion, which is which is uh, the motion, the ground going back and forth several times very quickly. Whereas the tall buildings, you know, they are kind of waving a little bit, but they are more or less uh, steady at this point. Right. So now I'm going to excite this toy model by what I would call long period motion, motion that goes back and forth like this that you saw here that would be the uh, kind of motion that you would see in a, in a deep sedimentary deposit in a big earthquake uh, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, event of a big earthquake. So here is long period motion now on the same toy model. So here is long period motion. Notice how the little house is just sitting where it is whereas the tall buildings or um, these long period structures are going back and forth waving getting a lot of response right so the long period motion does not do anything to the to the low rise structure it selectively excites our tall buildings this is the difference between long period motions that you can see in a big earthquake versus high frequency motions